In this tutorial, we're going to make a toothbrush holder. Right, we're going to use some new skills. We're going to go into the drafting workbench and use um, a draft with a polyline. Uh, we're also going to use a polar array from drafting. Uh, we're also going to use something new in the part workbench, which is a revolve. So this is an interesting tutorial. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started. Uh, go to FreeCAD on the desktop, right click on it, and then click on Execute. Of course, you can double click as well. Nothing new here. We're going to uh, click on this icon to start a new document, or File New does the same thing. Uh, do one of those, please. The workbench we're going to start with for a toothbrush holder is going to be the Draft Workbench. So click on Start and then click on Draft. I want to make sure we're all using the same view. So before we go any further, uh, let's all switch uh, to top view, down view. So I'll click on this. When you first get into the draft bench, you're probably going to see uh, these squares really close up. The small squares are a millimeter. The ones a little bit larger will be 10 by 10 millimeters. And you want to roll back until you can see the whole grid surface and that is 200 by 200, the same size as our bill plate. So do that, just roll this back so you see the whole grid surface. Now in this current view, if we drew something on here, it's gonna be laying flat. So I want you to find this spot that says Auto and click on that. This is our selections of, of views that we have for the grid. Uh, right now the top is what's selected. Uh, click on XZ Front and we'll change that view. We didn't actually change the view, we just changed the position of the grid, and you'll see you just have a line to view, but that's because we're still looking at it from uh, the top down here. So let's change your view now to front view. Essentially what we did here is we stood the grid up on end so that we could see it through the front view um, because we want to build something that's standing tall. The first tool we want to use, and the one I want you to click on here, is this polyline tool. Now before we get started, let me put this shape in your head. Basically it's a E with a real fat back. That's what we want to draw. So um, make sure you've got your polyline uh, selected and we'll get started. With the polyline selected, all we want to do right now is find center and click on that. So we got this line started we can start working with. This line we want to bring down the distance of one, two, three, four four of the big squares. Um, then just zoom in, roll your mouse wheel, zoom in and click where those intersect. Our next move is similar but to the right we're going to go over one, two, three, four of the big squares. Uh, zoom in and click at the intersection point there. At this point we're going to count these littler, littler squares and we're just going to go up three of them. So one, two, three and zoom in so you can make sure you're clicking at an intersection point. Now we go back. So we're going to go back all the way, but we're not going to click. We're going to go back all the way and count backwards. One big square, two big squares, and two little squares. So we're going to end up clicking right there where we counted back to, and that'll leave us a 22 millimeter uh, section of space behind the line. So click there, please. Now here we're going to draw the line up, and we're going to draw it up almost to where we started before. So uh, we'll draw up to the starting point, but we'll go back one, two, three little squares, and click there. From here we draw the line to the right again, and we'll go over to the right, and you'll see an interesting thing. When we get to where we want to go, a little dotted line uh, kind of appears underneath. So we want to go all the way back to an eat point where we're exactly ending where this one below ended. So, but straight across. We go straight across and we click on that point. From there we can go up three little ones, one, two, three, straight up, and click on that intersection point. Then just come straight back and end right above where we cornered last time. And click there. We've done half of our E and we want to come up one, two, three, four of the big squares, but then come back down one, two, three of the little squares, and click there as our next point. Then we just go over to the right again, which will be um, the remainder of this 
first big square and then one more big square and click there. Then we go up one, two, three little squares, click there. And this time we're going to bring this line back all the way back to be parallel with where we started. And we're just going to click right on where those two lines intersect. And you probably guessed it, we're just going to go down and we're going to click exactly where we started. And that'll finish our polyline. Now, if your E doesn't look like this, uh, give your instructor a call over. Or if your polyline didn't end by just clicking on the other one, you can hit escape or uh, on the keyboard or call your instructor over to help you with that too. Our next step is going to be going to a different workbench. Uh, so right now we're in draft and I want you to click on that and go to part. In the part workbench, we have this handy little icon we haven't used yet. It's called the revolve tool. So click on that. In the revolve menu, uh, we should have wire selected by default, but click on that if it's not selected. And then I want you to click on select reference. Selecting a reference means what part of this uh, line drawing do we want to revolve around. So we want to click on this back line. Actually hold down control and click on the other part of it as well. And you should have something that says wire edge something here. If you don't, give your instructor a call over. But that's uh, the step here is just to click on this back line. Now that you've got the back line selected, just make sure that at the bottom, the create solid is checked. Then go up to the top and click OK. So uh, you have just revolved your first item. Uh, go ahead, hold shift down on your keyboard and then the right mouse button and uh, take a look at what you made in all its glory. Once you're done, uh, just click on this view icon here so we get a 3D view and then click on uh, do, 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 uh, right here the magnifying glass which might look a little different on yours probably uh, a blue magnifying glass on a white piece of paper uh, but click on that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole right in the center for us to put our toothpaste tube. Uh, to drill that hole we're going to use a cylinder so click on the cylinder. Cylinder's buried in the middle of this thing, so we're going to make it a little bigger. So click on the cylinder and change its radius to 20. And change its height to 80. So change the radius to 20 and the height to 80, please. All right, so now you can see we got a big cylinder sticking out of the middle. Uh, let's right click on that and say transform. And then I just want you to lower it, not so it's flush, but so it's one, two, maybe three ticks less than flush. So three millimeters is sticking out of the top. Uh, do that, please. Now that you got that done, go ahead and click OK. And we're going to add in a new cylinder. So click on cylinder once again. All right, let's click on this cylinder label so we can change its properties. And let's go down to the properties and give it a height of 70. And then let's give it a radius of, say, 5. Do those changes, please. Now that you got the changes made, you'll see it here. I right click on it and say Transform. And where I want you to move this is uh, grab the green cone and just move it so it is say a two or three millimeters from the edge and we're just going to lower this so we know it's going through the top two. So do that please. Once you've got it in position there go ahead and click OK. Now this cylinder is going to be, uh, we're going to drill the holes for the toothbrushes and there's going to be multiple of them and they're going to go all around here. Uh, luckily there's something called a polar array in draft to make this easy for us. So let's switch our workbench again. Uh, go back to the workbenches, click on it and go back to draft. Click on that. In the draft bench you're looking for these blue ones and some there's so many blue ones sometimes you can't see them all. You've got to click on this little uh, dot double arrow line and it'll reveal some more. And from there, you're looking for this one that has three square blocks above another three, three square blocks. Click on that. 
So that activates your array function. And in your arrays, you will find something that says in the data area, array type. I want you to click on that, click on its down arrow, and change it from ortho, which is straight line arrays, to polar, which is circular arrays. So click on polar. I think there's only one thing left to change. We're going to pull this down a little bit, and we're looking for this line that says number P, which just means number of polar. And let's make that, well, let's say eight. Let's say we want to have eight toothbrushes in there. So we'll put eight, hit enter. Do that, please. And this is what you should have. Eight uh, of these circle around the center, uh, giving us, uh, saving us a ton of work, having to make these all individually and space them out. Uh, I didn't have mine show up right away. So uh, what I had to do to make mine show up was just click on the center button and open it and close it. And then all of a sudden they all showed up. So if you have a similar problem, try that. Okay, so now we are got to just subtract those. So of course that happens in the part workbench. So click on where it says draft now and then click on part. First, let's fuse everything that we want to subtract. So that of course is our array. So I'll click on that. I'll hold down control and also click on the cylinder. So those are all our subtraction items. And we're going to click on right here, this fuse tool, make a union of several shapes to fuse those. So do those steps, please. Now our cut just involves these two items. The f item we want to keep is the revolve. So click on that first. You'll see all of it highlighted here. Then hold down control and click on your fusion second. Do those two steps. And once you've got that done, just click on this tool here. It's the cut tool. And there you have it. You have made a toothbrush holder for you and your whole family. So uh, go review your tutorials on how to save and how to export. And let's get that printed.